Okay, we're nearly there with exercise 1E, but we've still got a couple of challenging bits to come, so um, I hope this will be helpful. So we're going to try and use the modulus argument form to split summations. Um, and we'll see what that looks like in a particular example in just a second. So as you can see here, I've got this geometric series because each time I'm going along, they are being multiplied by e to the i theta because the power is increasing by i theta each time. So I should be able to say that this ex expression that I've got here is a geometric series where it is going to be a, let's write down what the formula normally is, it's a r to the n minus one over r minus one. So clearly for this one, a is the first term, which is e to the i theta, hence it being here. We've then got r is also e to the i theta, because as we go across here, we're multiplying by r each time, e to the i theta, hence having e to the n i theta. And then I've got r again here, and well, it's just to leave the formula again. So if we convert each exponential term to its modulus argument form, this would allow us to consider the real and imaginary parts of the series separately, hence this idea of doing a split summation. So if I write out that series that I've got at the beginning, e to the i theta plus e to the 2i theta plus e to the 3i theta, as its separate parts, I would have cos theta plus i sine theta plus cos 2 theta plus i sine 2 theta, etc. I could gather together all of the real parts, and I could gather together all of the imaginary parts, so that these bits would be the real part of this expression, and the sine bits would be the imaginary part of this expression. And this all sounds very abstract until we start putting this into an example. Okay, so I'm only going to do one example of this, and then what I've got down here are some questions that I would recommend you trying afterwards. I would recommend doing them, th them in this order. So that's 1E question 5, review exercise one, question six, and then question six from exercise one E, because it's quite hard that one, it's got some weird stuff to do with binomial, but you should be able to do this because you guys are further math students. Okay, so here we have got a sum of a series, which they have called S, and it is equal to all of these things that I've got written here, but the series ends at this point that I've got here. So let me just write that down. The series is E to the I theta, plus e to the 2i theta, plus e to the 3i theta, plus all the way up to e to the 8i theta. Now, some of these, you might have some extra coefficients. You might have like a half and then a quarter, so that each time that the common ratio is not only e to the i theta, but it might have an extra value in front of it. But our question is just going to be quite straightforward. So our value of the first term here is e to the i theta, the common ratio is e to the i theta, and it appears that there are eight terms. So I'm going to, for part a, I'm going to actually try and do the sum of this series of these first eight terms. So the sum is going to be equal to, reminder, it is a r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. So it is going to be e i theta e to the i 8 theta, normally I'd write that 8 i theta, because that is n multiplied by i theta minus 1, all divided by e to the i theta minus 1. Now we learned about what the technique was to deal with things that look like this. So we're going to try and use what we did a few pages ago. I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by e to the negated half of that power, which is going to be e to the minus theta over 2i. And I'm going to start working through what happens here. So I will have for the numerator e to the i theta over 2, because I've just multiplied this by this, e to the 8i theta minus 1, all over e to the i theta over 2 minus e to the minus i theta over 2. Now I need to think about how I can deal with this numerator because I want to do a similar thing where I want this expression, I want to pull something out so that I have the power here of a 4 and then one with a minus 4. So that means I'm going to pull out from the numerator e to the 4i theta so that I get e to the 4i theta minus e to the minus 4i theta. This one is most similar to the third example that we did 
for those hyperbolic forms. And that is all going to be divided by e to the i theta over 2 minus e to the minus i theta over 2. So let's do some simplifying. First of all, I can add these powers. So that is 4 plus a half, which is 9 over 2. This part in brackets is the sine form. So it is going to be 2i sine of 4 theta. And this part in brackets is also the sine form, which is going to be sine 2i sine of theta over 2. And then there's some cancelling that can happen. The 2i on the top and bottom can cancel. And we end up with e to the 9 theta over 2i. I don't know why I've switched those around. But I have sine 4 theta over sine theta over 2 which is exactly what they wanted us to prove here. So do you notice we had to do two of those techniques in this question? One of them was this, multiplying by the power but negated and halved. The second one was here, was factorising and pulling out half of the power again to create this same thing. So both of the techniques were present in this question. Then it says, let P equal cos theta plus cos 2 theta plus cos 3 theta and q equal the sine version of all of that. Use your answer to part a to show that p is equal to this thing and find a similar expression for q and q over p. Okay I'm going to use this part of the page now so that I can see the question as well. So s is e to the i theta plus e to the 2i theta, plus e to the 3i theta, etc. Which we know is cos theta plus i sine theta, plus cos 2 theta, plus i sine 2 theta, etc. Which we know is actually cos theta, plus cos 2 theta, plus cos 3 theta, when you'd get all of those, plus i sine theta, plus i sine 2 theta plus and all of those which is actually if you look at this just p plus i q so s is equal to p plus i q the sum of the series is the real part of p and then the imaginary bits are q so i'm going to try and use my answer that s is equal to p plus iq. In other words, this is going to be that p is the real part of s and q is the imaginary part of s. So let's think about what that's going to be now. Let me just come down here so I've got a bit more space. So I'm going to look at this thing and I'm going to try and find the real part. Of it. I'm going to do that by using the definition of e to the 9 theta over 2 i. I'm going to put it into its modulus argument form. So s is equal to cos of 9 theta over 2 plus i sine 9 theta over 2 multiplied by sine 4 theta divided by sine of theta over 2. And so p is the real part of this. The real part of this, which we said that p is going to be this kind of yellow, the real part is this, this and this, which is cos of 9 theta over 2 sine of 4 theta divided by sine of theta over 2, which is actually cos of 9 theta over 2 sine of 4 theta cosec of theta over 2, which is exactly what they wanted us to show in the question. It now wants us to find an expression for q and q over p. So q is the imaginary part of s, which I'm going to do in green. It is going to be this part this part and this part, but we're going to ignore i because we're just taking the imaginary part of it. 
So it is going to be sine of 9 theta over 2, sine 4 theta, cosec theta over 2. And the last thing it wants me to work out is q over p, which is sine of 9 theta over 2, sine of 4 theta, cosec theta over 2, divided by cos of 9 theta over 2, sine of 4 theta, cosec of theta over 2. We're going to get cancelling and cancelling, and sine over cos is tan. So it is 9 theta over 2 as our answer to what q over p is. So this is not an easy question, but essentially what you're doing here is you come up with an expression for the sum of the series for s, and then to investigate these bits of cos theta and sine theta, you pull s apart into the two pieces, into its real piece and its imaginary piece, and then you come up with whatever the question is asking for you to do. So as a reminder, these are the questions I would recommend doing. Question five, question six from the review exercise, and then question six from exercise 1e, because I think it's pretty hard, um, that last one, but it's still interesting to look at, okay?